Should I install N-Phase microinverters? Hi, Tom from SolarAy here, and I'm here to help answer that question today with my five reasons why I think N-Phase microinverters are the right solution for pretty much any household looking to go solar. Before we start, though, it's important to answer the question of what, what are microinverters? Um, and it's actually a pretty simple technology where you take the process of con converting DC to AC power, um, which would normally be done in what we would call a string inverter, and we call it that because in that case, um, you've got the inverter down near the meter board, but then you've got the panels hooked up in series with a DC um, a DC cable down to the, the, the main inverter. With N-phase microinverters, you've got a small inverter underneath each panel. Um, and so you've actually got quite a, a safe and easy AC cable run um, from the roof down to the, straight into the meter board. Um, and so what this does, and that leads on to the first benefit of, of installing N-phase microinverters is it means that each panel can be independent from the others. And, though, and so if you've got shade, for example, from trees, perhaps bird droppings or, or branches and leaves on the panels, um, it means that you're gonna get more out of the other panels if one of the panels is underperforming. And this is true at any one time, for example, with shade, but also over time, because the panels actually drop off in output over their lifespan. Um, and the warranty is normally somewhere between 90 to 80% of the original output after 25 years, the better ones being up around 90 and the standard ones being more like 80%. Um, and, but because they do that at different rates, if you've got N-phase microinverters, your panels are actually going to um, be able to get, you're gonna get maximum output from each panel as they drop off over time. The second main reason I recommend N-phase microinverters is we've got a lot more flexibility with how we can install them. And so if you've got limited roof space, for example, but multiple roof spaces, or even enough roof space, but multiple roof spaces, we can put panels in different orientations. And what that can do is kind of flatten that bell curve so you get more power either in the morning if that's where you want it, or especially in the afternoon. Um, if you have a smart meter and you're in the um, Osgrid distribution area, a lot of households will be paying different rates at different times of the day. And the peak billing rates often between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And so what we like to do a lot of, for a lot of our customers is to kind of push as much output as possible into the afternoon to cover that peak billing period, but also have some panels facing north if possible. Um, so that way you're gonna get like a good distribution of output right across the day. And it just allows you to be able to use more solar power as it's being generated because you're not getting such a big peak uh, during the middle of the day. And then so number three, um, we've got consumption monitoring. And this is such a big one that often gets overlooked. But to be able to have this solar system's output across the day, how much electricity you're using in the home. And then thirdly here, you can see the gray, which is like the room for improvement. And that's either electricity you're buying from the grid or um, exporting, which is like the excess solar power that perhaps could otherwise be um, stored in a battery. And I chose this example, of course, because it's a good example of a household that's not using enough um, solar power during the day and using quite a lot of electricity at night. And this would be a great candidate for adding a Tesla Powerwall battery, um, which has a capacity of about 13.5 kilowatt hours. Um, and so basically, if you look at all that electricity there, 17 point, uh, 17.9 has been exported to the grid where well, you could store a lot of that in a battery and then use it in the evening um, where in this case the households come home from work and have started using a lot of electricity and so they're the insights you can get of course the other example the other way of managing that would be to just use more electricity during the daytime um, so to get your head around how the solar system performs in comparison to what you're using in the home is a real game changer and it's complete next level uh, monitoring compared to just having like the Wi-Fi um, connection to your home where you can kind of see only the blue there, which is what the solar would be doing. Because it's really hard to compare that to your home to work out like how much electricity is being generated up on the roof at any one time, but also the trends that kind of happen across um, multiple days based on the weather. Number four is Enphase is a lot safer. We call it safer solar. Um, so there's two main parts to this. Firstly is because it's an AC cable run from the roof down to the meter board, um, that in itself is a lot safer than a high voltage DC cable. One of the problems you've got with DC cables is if you've got rodents in the roof, you know, possums or something chewing on the wires, 
it can cause a fault um, or like an arc fault where the where the electricity jumps um, across across where it's been bitten in this case and and that can that's a fire risk the other problem we have um, with standard inverters which is in the process of being fixed which is great but it's these DC isolator switches um, if you can if you get water in those uh, they can have an arc fault as well where they basically catch fire um, which is kind of ironic because the switch is there as a safety <laughs> safety measure but it's often the switch itself that catches fire a lot of the time it'll just look like this where it doesn't burn down your whole house thank goodness but we do have um, quite a lot of issues across Australia with these switches catching fire so with Enphase it's a much smarter way of doing things and we really wish that all of the um, publicity that is that has been out there recently um, around solar fires I wish they'd also say hey look there's actually another way that's um, of installing solar that completely eliminates the risk of having a solar fire and that's to get an, an Enphase system um, yeah without the without the DC isolator switch and then Finally, my number five is they're easily expandable. And this is a big one. I've, I know a lot of people that got solar installed, um, you know, from the early days, even when there was like that 60 cent feeding tariff. Um, but even not that long ago, you know, a five kilowatt system was fairly standard. These days, a 10 kilowatt system is much more standard. And, you know, we're going much higher than that as well. Very regularly installing 15, 20, 25 kilowatt systems on a standard household because of EVs and, and the ability to include battery storage. So whether you're looking at um, getting a battery now, or perhaps you're wondering, you know, in the future, can I add panels if, if that's something that you want to do, then with Enphase, that's definitely the way to go because you don't need to match the new panels that you're going to install to the existing ones. Um, and it's very difficult to source old panels these days. And it's always been that way. So if you've got a string inverter, say, for example, you put a five kilowatt inverter on with five kilowatts of panels, you've got two problems there. Firstly, if you want to expand the system, um, you're going to either have to put in a second inverter or replace the existing one with a larger one. And then secondly, if you're going to just have one inverter, you're going to need to match the panels. Um, so with Enphase, if you want to add panels to the system, you can just use whatever's available, which is... Um, a lot easier and cheaper, of course, which is um, always good. Uh, so they're my top five. There's another um, five more on the blog post, which I'll link to below. We've got our top 10 reasons why pretty much all of our customers choose to go with Enphase. Um, and if you've got any questions or, yeah, kind of want to know a bit more about Enphase, you can just pop the question in the um, comment section below and we'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks and uh, bye for now.